One of the new tools that we got inside of Lightroom 5 was the Spot Removal tool. It's actually not a new tool. It's a tool that's been there for a while. Uh, it just got, it got some new functionality added to it. So if we jump over here uh, into our toolbox in the develop module, you'll see that our spot removal tool is there. And, and for all intents and purposes, it pretty much looks exactly the same uh, as it used to. It's got a cloning and healing option, a size option, opacity option. But the difference in Lightroom 5 that we got is now you can use this tool. It used to just be that all I could do with it was here, let's, let's go to, uh, let me show you a quick example. All I could do with it was if I found a spot of some sort, of course I picked the wrong photo to find a spot in. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a photo. Uh, let's, here, let me bring up the exposure a little bit, bring down the highlights, and uh, we'll zoom in on part of the photo. So I find a spot that I wanna get rid of. And it works great on center spots, of course, but it even worked good on areas that just had uh, some kind of a, a distraction or something that was in circular nature, would fit right inside the circle. And what you could do is just click on it and Lightroom would go in there and remove it. So again, it works great on spots. It did work great on spots, but in Lightroom 5, they actually made it a brush to where now I don't just click with it, but I can click and I can paint. So you can remove a ton of different things with it. Well, I wanna show you one uh, that works out really well here, and that is when we're working on eyes, okay? So let's take a look at this photo here. We're gonna, we're gonna zoom in on her eyes and think of the tool in, in a little bit of a different way because we think maybe, maybe you're gonna remove a trash can from the foreground um, or a telephone wire from the sky or something like that. But think of some of our retouching tasks. And one of those retouching tasks is eyes. So we can use this to help kind of just the dark areas that we see below people's eyes, and this happens to everybody. Just come over here and just paint. And Lightroom will automatically go and sometimes do a good job of finding something to fix it with. Or as in my case right here, it actually said, I'm gonna go fix it with the exact duplicate of what I found over on the other side, which is what I'm trying to remove. So when that happens, you can click inside here and you can kind of reposition what it's, it's fixing with. So there we go. Let's kind of move that up a little bit. All right, so now that we've got it fixed, it's, it's obviously, if I, if I turn the, the before and after here, it's obviously, it doesn't look very realistic. This is the trick to making a fix like this, especially if you're retouching, okay? Sometimes you don't wanna do this again if you're maybe getting rid of that trash can or that telephone wire, you're okay if it's totally gone. In this case, I don't wanna destroy the skin texture, so what you do is come over here to the opacity slider and just reduce the opacity slider. I'll bring it all the way down to zero, so that's as if I didn't do anything to the photo, and then I'll come over here and just start increasing, and that's usually what I do. I start at zero, and I start to bring it up a little bit. And usually somewhere between 40, 50 works pretty good. But here, take a look. That's before and that's after. And the reason why I mention is because I find that, that that little slider sneaks by so many people because before Lightroom 5, when it was just the spot removal tool, when we we're removing sensor dust or little spots that may be on the sky or on a, on a gray foreground or on a gray background from a, from a studio, we never really went to the opacity slider because usually we wanted those spots gone. We didn't want them semi-opaque. But now in Lightroom 5, that opacity slider becomes really important because sometimes you are removing something where you want the best of both worlds. So next time you're using that retouching brush, uh, just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be as heavy handed as it originally comes across. Jump into there to that opacity slider and it'll help out. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.